Hello, people. It's John back in Thailand. Yeah, I had to head back to Australia. My son had a motorbike accident. He's a motorbike racer, and yeah, a bit concerning. I got there, and he didn't look too good, but he's improved quick. He's uh, broken his pelvis and got a broken wrist. His pelvis seems to be healing up all right because he's able to walk a little bit now about his crutches. But here I am in the orchard. It's only the only young tree orchard at the moment, but it will get to be a big tree orchard eventually. Maybe another year, year and a half. Um, we've got a we've got a track down here which we use. Although the guy that works for us, he uh, he's been using this area here for some reason. I can see his tracks from his tractor, but we've put uh, concrete in. Uh, yeah, to try and combat the erosion. Uh, that's the first one we did. Only little, there's some bigger ones down there. Um, it's helping, <laughs> but but it, we haven't had really huge uh, rainstorms yet. You know, it's like still a dry season. And uh, yeah, it's one of those things. So uh, with the Moringa group, I was talking about uh, land where I'd put some Moringa trees and which is that air bald area over there it actually looks bald but there's corn planted there but without rain the corn might not survive uh that's what that's what the guy does that gets the land used for free in return for doing jobs uh there's a track just on the other side of that tree that's the boundary of our land oh you can see the track down there if moringa works out we may plant here uh these these trees we have here uh they're all mango trees they uh, they grow well here it's rough ground i suppose you could say like stony rocky volcanic sort of soil um uh, there's plenty there's plenty of uh iron in it i'd imagine just not enough to mine <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so we've got mango trees all around and land which we could grow something else on, yeah, maybe moringa, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what that tree is, but it gives fruit that's tasty, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see the rocky, rocky ground here, and, well, I don't know, there's a few plants that haven't done well. My wife planted those in. Tick likes to uh, plant things and I think she forgets to water them. Something else there. Not too sure what that is. And another one over there. <laughs> She's got the little watering buckets but forgotten to uh, come and fill them up regularly. Yeah, so there's a lot of the rest of the orchard down there. Uh, before I went back to Australia, to look after my son we uh, staked all the trees from the bottom corner up to there and about halfway down they needed new stakes they'd all had their their little tree stakes which are only oh, not even half a meter long so we've put in meter long stakes and uh, hopefully that'll that'll be uh, you know like something which will Keep them going until they get bigger because they had windstorms here before i went back to australia and there might even be some in this area here that are still like not quite right and need new stakes i'll probably guarantee i need new stakes uh yeah so there's been a few problems um we've encountered over the over the last three or four years here uh we got a dam put in last year and the dam wall wasn't done properly. It was done with soft soil, which had been moist soil in an area down there. And of course, even though there was a drainage pipe so that the overflow could go out, the water worked its way around past the overflow pipe and sort of like eroded it, eroded the soil. And uh, we've lost probably 20% of our dam capacity. Um, the bank on the other side's all been built up with the excavator and it's all solid soil around the other three sides, but <laughs> uh, didn't help. 
not for that one. We'll fix that up soon enough, hopefully, before the wet season comes in, because it's it's uh, important, like during the summer, like when these trees get bigger, that we have uh, at least one or two waterings to keep the trees alive. They are hardy things, but you know, they can't survive on uh, no water at all. Uh, we've got some land there. I'm not too sure what's going to happen there. Uh, maybe more mango trees. And this slope here. Uh, I'm not too sure what we're going to do here. Uh, I want to um, put something in. Uh, bamboo may be the, the thing we put in because we always need bamboo for stakes and uh, making things. Uh, yeah, so we may may put in bamboo here just to consolidate it so that it doesn't sort of have a problem when the really wet season comes, and they do come, um, and we get, like, erosion of the soil and gullies. We've already got one down the bottom there, which is not a major drama because it's fairly flat down there. Uh, we can put some rocks in there and control the flow of water a bit better. But, yeah... Uh, Things have been pretty dry here. We've got nothing in the rain gauge today, but because I haven't been here, so the water could have evaporated if it was last week's water. And uh, maybe just another row of mangoes along here, six or seven trees. But I want to look at alternatives and like the Moringa is, well, it sounds like a pretty good alternative. So yeah, we'll we'll look at that, and if it turns out as a good commercial idea, we'll we'll get into it. You know, like there is uh, free time in our in our schedule with the uh, mango trees. Like we could be busy for two or three weeks, and we got nothing to do for a week, and then we could be busy for a couple of days, and nothing for another week, and then you know, like when it's harvest time. We get busy, but then we still have spare days, so the Moringa could work in well. Um, we'll wait and see. Okay, that's all for me. I'm going back to the village, which is way over there where we live, and have a good day, folks.